Hello everyone, welcome to the most must-see YouTube channel in the galaxy. Welcome to... Not moving, your arm just popped. Yeah. I feel like I pointed the wrong direction. Uh, eye popping! <laughs> you probably pointed to the wall. Okay, <laughs> welcome to Not Movie Hacks. Speaking right now is one half of your hosting team, Matt. And to my left is the tremulous... Tremulous? The, uh, <laughs> Tyler the Defiler. The trepidatious Tyler <laughs> does. <laughs> Pedophiler. No, we're cutting that. No, we aren't. No, we're not. Uh, that makes too much work. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of people who are probably watching this probably haven't seen any of our other content. So let's try to be professional and try to get into this review as soon as possible. All right. So just real quick, if you haven't seen any of our videos before, we are recording on really shitty mics. Yes. Uh, in a really shitty setup, which is nothing we can do. We're college students. Background noise. We're in a dorm. There's going to be background noise. But we're going to try our best to talk over it or just cut it out. Yes. Uh, maybe. Uh, again, we talk about... Movies that we see, TV shows, everything like that. Uh, movies are more typically going to schedule around the weekend. Yep. TV shows are just free. It'll be occasionally. We'll eventually continue our Game of Thrones season 7 review. We'll eventually. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, we'll get around to that. Uh, Matt will occasionally post uh, wrestling reviews, and I might occasionally post singular movie reviews of stuff that comes out that you haven't seen, but you don't plan on seeing or whatever. So... We want to get started on Blade Runner 2049, and if you hadn't seen our non-spoiler review, we both adore this movie. Yeah, it's the it's best the year for me. It's a masterpiece in every single regard. It's, it's going to be my top three, almost definitely. So let's get into a plot. This is, again, spoiler review. Yes. Uh, the movie, the marketing doesn't give away anything, and I loved it. Uh, I loved it for that, so I went to this movie blind. So what? So spoilers. What do you want to start with? There, we don't have any cons, and we also, if you haven't seen our other videos, we typically have an outline for top stuff we want to talk about. But this is just so grand, and we also didn't have any. This time. is two hours and forty three minutes of just like where every scene has relevance and yeah. can be discussed. So we we so. we're gonna miss stuff. We apologize for that. We saw it yeah. once, but this is very loose. Typically, our our reviews are more structured, but this is gonna be yeah. very. Freeform podcast style. So, yes. spoiler view, where do you want to start with? So, I want to talk, I want to begin with the animal, Batista. The Batista. He, Batista Bong Ryan Gosling. Yes. All, all, all. Yeah. No, Batista's in this the first 10-ish minutes yes. of the movie. Uh, he does play a key role, though, which yeah. you find out later. But Batista, coming from WWE champion yeah. and wrestler to... A fantastic actor. I mean, even just compare the way he acted in, in the original Guardians of the Galaxy mm -hmm. to the two movies he's been in this year, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 mm -hmm. and Blade Runner he, 4049. He is a passion. He He's trying to get better. And this he one, has gotten better. He's, he, he, yeah. yeah, he's trying and he's because he's taking acting classes yes. over and he uh, he wants to get better. And this one, he doesn't play any, he doesn't play anything with makeup. He just plays a person. Yeah. And it's he's fantastic. Great. Yeah. Um, and I, in an interview I saw with him, he just, he seems like the most humble guy. Yeah. Like, he says, I mean, he could have taken, like, the Johnson or the Rock route and just being action movies, but, like, in an interview, he said, like, he's interested in directing, and, because he's, he's worked with Sam Esmond, I mean, that's, I mean, um... Sam Mendes? Sam Mendes. Yep. And now, uh... Well, yeah, he was in Skyfall, too, I yeah. grab it, yeah. No, no uh, Skyfall, Spectre. Uh, Spectre, yeah. And, um, he just says, like, I want to be able to direct like people, but they're, like, I can't comprehend, like, he, he... He's in it for the passion of, of creativity. He's not in it for, like, I want to make big money by doing Jumanji 6. Yeah, well, Jumanji looks fun. It does. Yeah, Jumanji but you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, so let's get, let's get into the actual, uh, so, what happens. So the plot of this movie is, the, it's marketed as this detective, Ryan Gosling, who plays yes. K. Yes, yes. Uh, he un unearths a secret, and he has to go track down Deckard. Uh, played by Harrison Ford. Yes. And that's that's all the plot we're given. But this movie is so much more so K, which you'll make fun of me for. I just missed the line in the movie where they say K is a replicant. Uh, they don't... What I love is they... Right in the first... Like the, right, right in the, the first, first um, yeah, encounter. Yeah, I, uh, I just... I was focusing on Batista or whatever. But, I, but I, basically I, it just starts with... Um, K landing in like this like this zone that says all like this is all like rubble. It's a farming. It's a farming. Yeah, it's a farming it's zone. A and then um, Batista has a protein farm. Yep. And he goes inside the house, and Ryan Gosling's in a really great scene. Ryan Gosling where... is a Blade Runner, and Batista yes. is a replicant. Yeah. So, uh, do you remember Batista's? It's like something with an S. Do you remember his character's name? I feel like we should at least respect Batista enough to give him his character. He's Batista. He's Batista. Okay. Uh, but yes, he lands in a field, and you're immediately, when you're first, the movie starts, you're like, fuck, this is directed yeah. and shot beautifully. Ryan Gosling lands, he uh, encounters Batista, who ran away 20 
nine years ago, and he's yeah. been living on this farm. And then he's working for um for the uh, for Jake Leto's character. Yes, he, he's yeah. uh he's a farmer. He's probably uh, but he's a replicant who left and yes. hid away. And uh, uh, Ryan Gosling's also a replicant who is a Blade Runner who goes. Uh, they confront. They have a one of the few action scenes in the entire movie. Yeah. Uh, where Batista throws Ryan Gosling. Is head brutally, a bun- brut- brutally yeah. through a wall. They have a really, like, graphically violent fight because they're just two robots. Just on their and just like they're just beating the shit out yeah, of each other. It's great. And then the like, uh, Batista. He's about to, Ryan Gosling's about to kill him, and Batista's like, "You haven't seen what I. You haven't seen a miracle. It's like happy to kill your own people." And he's like, "You, you yeah. clearly haven't seen a miracle. Like, you haven't seen a miracle." Yep. And then he shoots him. Batista's dead, and yeah. then that starts the plot because then Ryan Gosling finds a flower in the tree which i should say this is jumping ahead but that flower was put by deckard because bees need flowers to survive oh, nice. so he goes and visits the grave so that was a little thing so he finds a little thing in the ground it's a little massive case filled with bones and then or he doesn't know it's filled with bones but he finds a picture yeah and so now we transport forward to the actual city uh, of Los Angeles, and it's this grimy and gross, futuristic, yep. like suffocating feeling. It feels everything's l- very desaturated, kind of like a rival. Yeah, yeah. Everything. everything just feels lived in and has history and a culture, and it's. Yeah. But then it's just wide grinning shot as they go to the LAPD, and you see that no one really respects Ryan Gosling throughout because yeah, he calls him a skin job. Yeah, right as he's walking in. Yeah, and no one respects him because he is a replicant who kills his own kind and then we get he does like a test to make sure he's okay he passes then he goes and meet with robin wright's character yeah. uh captain joshi joshi, yeah, I think joshi or whatever and there's stuff with her in the movie with her, her and ryan gosling which we'll get to but there's like an emo- a hint of emotional connection nothing in this movie by the way is really ever stated like again no. they, they never they never outwardly say that k is a replicant they just say why are you killing your own kind which is perfect because there's not a lot of exposition in this movie at all no things flow and you learn things you piece things together through dialogue it's not like war of the planet of the apes where it's just like this is bam here you yeah. are in yeah. this world not yeah. like great sci-fi it's, it's good for, sci- for sci-fi sequels sci-fi sequel yeah it's uh but the so i mean do you want to keep going on this so um so you you oh we could talk about how um like right the opening crawl is like um what was Jared Leto's character's name? Uh, Nyander Wallace. Wallace. They yep. said that these replicants are made to obey. That yep. comes into play later. So I want to preface that. Like these, so, oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Robin Wright says like, oh, you're, you're the best kid. Like to Agent K. Yep. And Agent K doesn't, doesn't say anything. And then they go, then, um, Agent K goes back to his house. Uh-huh. And they has, and it has one oh. of the most unconventional romance stories. Yeah, which was like one of the best romance stories yes, of the year too. Good. Um, so, K, uh, because he's a replicant, he doesn't like human women. So uh, the Wallace Company... So we just seen the opening crawl. The, this expands on the lore so much because after the events of the original Blade Runner in 2020, uh, I think Tyro Corporation went black, uh, went bankrupt. Then there was a blackout where all they lost... Everyone in the world lost electricity for 10 days. All the replicants, all the information... All the replicants got wiped clean. Did you see the the, the anime? I did not, no. Oh, it was good. It was good? Okay. It was by the guy who did um, Can We Bop. Oh, I'll have to watch about. it then. It yeah, really, I, uh, really so blackout. All very there are fragments of information, yeah. but most of everything's wiped. Then the Wallace Company by Jared Leto comes over, takes over the company, builds a new line of replicants. Yes, yeah, so that are at least according to open crawl. Open crawl are made to obey. Like yep. they will not rebel. So they're because because Nexus six and eight, Nexus six, six through eight were Tyrell. Yep, and then the new I don't know what Nexus version they are. I, I never because said Because Batista was next to eight. He's the he's the last yeah. he's the old old generation. Yeah. Ryan Gosling's a new one. So we get for so this is it. We're not even in the same plot. This is still in the first like thirty minutes. So first like fifteen. Yeah. So <laughs> Ryan Gosling. Then he goes back. I believe. Uh, nope. They have that weird. So Ryan Gosling. We're going all over the place because you don't have an outlaw. Yeah. Uh, he he's like he has he formed a relationship with. An automated robot, an automated like hologram robot that's programmed to tell him what he wants to hear. Yes. To tell him, like, give him like the satisfaction of a relationship, which will go into more of like the ideas of being human and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but the effects on that are just 
mind like they're like a lot of times light will come in on the background and while they're having a conversation her hologram will like outline you see through her yeah and it's these like little things but they never bring attention to it they never address it once no they never sorry sorry this background noise we never they never mention it but it's just these little things so they have like a i think with ryan gosling kind of has like a really shipper connection to this artificial yes. created hologram so but and it's so it's weird because the woman acts like she acts like so the woman who played her did a really great job of still acting it's like, like Anna de Armas. I yes, it up. does a good job of acting like a like acting like a human with real emotions, but also being just slightly too positive. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like I am a robot. Yeah, but like she's, but like there's like this there's this there's just this off sense about it. Yeah, that like you can you can interpret it any way you want. Like I feel like if you were like I wasn't really okay. With, like there were parts of it I had problems with. Mm-hmm. Not not problems with the movie, but like. Problems with the relationship, like yeah. I was like, this is off. Yeah, it's, it's not not def- not different to the movie. No, yeah, no, but it, it's one of those things where your subconscious is like yeah, something like, is because she's too po- she's just a little bit too positive, and it, like the way she's changing, the way she looks mm-hmm. so quickly. It's one of those things where I think it's meant to like take us like this isn't real, this is a fake yes. connection through a ro- like through a thing, but there's always something that feels a little bit off, and I think it's obviously done on purpose. Everything. And it's also this. To like say something kind of about um, K, you know. Yeah. I he, mean, it's not just that he has one human connection. It's like it just seems like he doesn't. He's so lonely that he just needs like that positivity. Yeah. Like he he just came and be bothered because like even when he talks to the replicant prostitutes, he's just kind of like. Ugh, yeah. I don't yeah. want to talk to you. So I think we'll get into that more as we get to the end, like yeah. stuff on that. So we're still not even at the main plot. So we eventually get to the knowledge that the bones they found. Was the was Rachel from yes. the first movie? The bones yeah. they found. Well, at first they found out that the that the bones that the woman was pregnant. They find that the woman was pregnant, and then that she the baby was born. You yes. find that baby the you discover the baby was born. That there was an emergency C section. That she died during childbirth, and then you eventually find a serial number, and it's revealed that it is Rachel. Yeah. The so Rachel from the original movie got pregnant. So you're immediately like, okay, well now that's so most, they had the hair. Yep, they had the hair, so you're like, shit, that's Rachel. Uh, so now you know that... So now it's assumed that Deckard and her had a child. Yeah. So this is now the big thing. So they... So one of the big things about the Wallace Corporation, one of their big things that Jared Leto's character is trying to do is the Tyrell Corporation figured out how to... for the replicants to recreate life. But only he knows that. He, but he only... Wait. But he only he knows that until they find the bones. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. So it seems like he's been trying to do this for a while. Yeah, but they're like, Tyrell Corporation found out the secret, and now we're... Ch- but the thing is, no, because towards the end when he's like, maybe she was programmed to fall in love with you to get... to When Wallace has the replicant of Rachel, like a copy of her, he's talking to Deckard, he's like, maybe you were programmed, maybe she was programmed to fall in love with you well, just for the sole then, purpose. Then Tyre- well, then Tyrell knows, but he's dead. Yeah. I'm it's saying the only person alive that is alive. That knows is... Yeah, well, okay. I know that Tyrell knows. Okay, so we're jumping ahead. So you discover that... Here, I'll let you take... I'm, I'm, I'm processing so many things at once. Go, you take over. Where were we at? We were at the baby. The, they found out... Kay found out that there's a baby. Now he used to go hunt her down. Hunt the baby down. So they has to hunt the baby down. Um... There's just so much in this... So... Uh, they have to go hunt the baby down, and then it's basically so. What Denise does, does he go, this is that is that when he goes out to L.A. because he the orphanage because he yep, finds he go, out the place for the orphanage. Yep, he goes to the orphanage. Okay, so we should say we're gonna miss a lot. We're very yeah. sorry. We're kind of like all over the place right now. But Ryan Gosling in one of his scenes with a character with Robin Wright, Captain yeah. Joshi, he he describes he's like I have a memory of being very little and being in the orphanage we'll eventually go to. Yeah. And the boys or whatever, they all he had was a little wooden horse and it's all he had in the world. And he didn't care what they did to him, he just wanted to have his one thing. So he hides it in a furnace in the back of this really like abandoned yeah. factory and then the kids beat him up or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, but the thing is he's like I never told anyone. He's like, I've never told anyone before, but he's like it's not real, it's a fake memory. No. So that that will come up important later. So he eventually finds, and he eventually goes into San Diego. Yeah, San and Diego. It's just an absolute dumpster. It's a trash. Like. It's, it's a trash heap. Yeah. Trash heap. But there are people living there yes. with a small little. What was that kid organization? Was it people breeding to be replicants? Were they all replicants or? The kids, 
owned by the or- by the yeah by well, Morgan from The Walking Dead. Were those were all orphans? They weren't. Yeah, they, they were trying to make a ship to go off world. Oh, okay. So like, okay. So Ryan Gosling goes there, and he realizes it's the same place that's in his memory. Yes. And then he eventually through one like a fantastically directed scene where the camera starts to shake as you feel his because emotions. he's like he's recognizing it. He's like he's, he's like what the fuck? He's like and then he goes to the same place where he hid the horse. Yep. Pulls it out and he brush he slow uh, the even one is so great. Uh-huh. He just slowly brushes off the number and he s- brushes off the the hooves. Mm-hmm. Sees the number, the same number that's written underneath the tree. Yep. The, by the way, when he goes back to the house, he finds he goes in the piano because he's an insanely smart detective because he's a robot. Yeah. Uh, he finds a picture of Rachel with a baby, so he knows that a baby was born. Then he goes to a tree and then he wipes off and he sees the number six ten twenty one, and that triggers something because that's the thing on his horse that he remembers. So he's like, oh shit. So, he gets the horse, then he goes back to... Oh, we should also mention, when he gets to the orphanage place, they do, like, a Benjamin Franklin-style trap where they shoot a kite into the sky. It shoots electricity, shuts his entire flying yeah. car off. He falls. He gets out. There are just tons of people surrounding him. He gets into a small fight because he's replicant. Goes up, breaks one guy's back, shoots a bunch, and then the one of the robots, Lev? Who's the main villain replicant in the movie? I don't remember what her name was. Uh, I don't remember. I think it was something with an L. Something. Yeah. Uh, but she is controlling rockets from the sky, and she just blows it's up. It's like a pavlo, basically. He, yeah, it's uh, stealth bombers or whatever. Kills everyone that's threatening Ryan Gosling because she wants Ryan Gosling to find the baby so she can then take it out yeah. and kill it so there isn't, like, an uprising, I believe. Or not uprising, but uh, a shift in, like, the balance or a collapse of the wall that they built. Matt's looking up. Does it say? Wait, what, were they trying to kill the baby? I guess they were trying to kill the baby. Everyone was trying to kill the baby. So... I know, I know the Blade Runners are trying to kill the baby. I thought that um, Wallace wanted the baby. I thought they wanted to kill the baby to study it. Well, I mean, couldn't they just study it while it was alive? I don't, I don't know. Uh, so... <laughs> I think I think they wanted it to be alive. Lo- love. Love, okay. Yeah. We're also kind of, like, we're kind of struggling with that nutline, aren't we? Yeah, we should have done that one. Yeah, we should have done that one. Just so, because people might actually watch this video. I know. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we, we, we promised go check out our mother spoiler Yeah, our review. other reviews are better than this. Like, yeah. we really wanted to get this out as fast as possible. Because we both love this movie. So, we just, fine. So, do you just want to, like, try to go into the themes or whatever of the movie? Or, like, the idea, we're already committed to this. Let's we're go, already let's committed go to this. It. So, he finds the horse, goes back, and in one of, like, the most mesmerizing scenes in the movie, uh, the uh, his... What's the joy? The his like holographic wife yes. or girlfriend or whatever is joy. She orders one of the hookers that Ryan Gosling sort of had a connection with in air quotes. Yeah. Uh, and then they have this really mesmerizing scene where the hologram kind of links to the body of uh, the hooker or whatever. Yes. And they're they're not in sync, but they're like a little bit lagged behind, so it's like Ryan Gosling's touching the hologram. And it's this like beautifully mesmerizing scene where like the hologram touches or they touch the back of Ryan Gosling's neck and the hands are in different spots or whatever. And I can't describe it enough, but the it's done in such amazing detail and such like a mes- It's done very like objectively. It's like you can interpret it as being romantic or you can interpret it as being weird. Yeah. Like when you say mesmerizing, it's not filmed mes like it's it's good because like everything's so normal. Yeah. Except for like this woman that's like yeah, it's, has like that, four arms. That's why it's mesmerizing yeah. because it's it's just this it's just like this oddity. Yeah. That but it fits in the universe that you're in. So after that they what happens after it? Well, right before that he goes to the uh, memories. The person makes memories. So they meet with the per- person who makes all the memories for the replicant. And she's like in a glass bubble building c- bubble yep. of her own because she apparently has um, a horrible immune a system. Horrible immune system. And she was originally going to go off for with her parents, but mm-hmm. they left her here because she wouldn't have survived. No, the journey. Or- so. We should see that this is the one scene where Ryan Gosling has an outburst where he meets the memory, yeah. which is just. It's so perfectly done because he. This is when the he realizes the memory actually happened. Yes. This memory happened to either him or to someone, but he just screams, throws something because he's starting to. He's starting to break away from the obey. He's starting to become human. He's starting to like break the wall that Captain Joshi mentions. He's starting to actually become more human than the humans yeah. in the movie. 
So after that, after then we talked about the sex scene. So what happens yeah. after the sex scene? Is that when he um, goes to the test again, the the, the stable yep. ending test, he has, and he fails it horribly? He fails it horribly, and Kevin Joshi, because this is where they hinted an emotional yeah. connection between the two, uh, kind of like maybe like a, a physical or like sexual connection. I, I, I thought it was more like maternal. Like parent to... Yeah, but I didn't get any sexual tension between them. Well, there's that one line where she goes, what would happen if I finish this drink or whatever while she's in uh, Kay's apartment? I, I took that as, like, a kind of sexual romantic attraction. I don't know, because, like, he, he has the... the yeah, it, but the who knows? Girl. It was probably more of a respect maternal thing, like, you're right. But she basically saves him, yeah. uh, puts him on suspension, because his, 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 uh, his, like, uh, what's it? Like, brain waves are miles yeah. off. And then at that point, he, he says, like, what do I have in the forest? Because you were supposed to go find this child, but instead you went to go look at memories. Yeah. He says... The child's dead, and she's like, "What?" He's like, "He is taken care of. Yeah. He's dead." And so she thinks the case is solved, which is yeah. important. But this also, he's a he disobeyed. That's yes. the what. It's the first, not this is the first time he lied to someone and disobeyed. Yes. a direct order, which is again goes into more of the themes of like becoming human, finding your soul, and whatever. And ooh, hit the desk. And uh, so after that, uh, love, I believe, is this right after love goes to the LAPD. Basically right after, It's yeah. basically right after, uh, which I kind of really liked Robin Wright in the scene. Yeah. Because Love, she, Robin Wright's character, Captain Joe, she takes a glass, drinks it. Love crushes the glass in her hands, squeezes her hands so the glass goes in her hands. But Robin Wright is just standing there like, uh-huh. She's like, trying to torture her to try to find out where Kay is. And Robin Wright was, well, is she doesn't, not doing it. And then Love is like, I'm going to tell Wallace that you shot first, so I have to kill you. And she's like, do your duty. Just yeah. do it. And then she kills... Captain Joshi uh, finds out that uh, what's it called that what's K went to Las Vegas because he located where he located where Deckard might be or like life there. Yeah. He located uh, oh sorry the wood from his horse is only found in Las Vegas. So he goes there, sees life. So he goes into a hotel where he, he encounters uh, Deckard Shaw. Deckard Shaw, what's his name? Deckard. Yeah. Deckard? It's what? Deckard. It's oh, Deckard. Oof, Who's Deckard down. Shaw? Someone's Deckard Shaw. You keep going. I'm going to look it up. Okay. Keep going. So he goes, he goes into the, um, he basically finds, like, a bee farm, a bee, ha- bee farm in, like, this wasteland that's Las Vegas now. And, um. Deckard Shaw is the villain from Fast and Furious. <laughs> Wait, what? Deckard, what's his name? Deckard from Blade Runner. Rick Deckard. Oh, is his Rick? <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Deckard shot. Okay, so goes to Las Vegas, uh, where he Ryan Gos not Ryan Gosling, Harrison Ford has like lived for the last thirty years. Yeah. Uh they have a cool little like chase fight scene where it's kind of thrown back to the first movie where uh Roy or Batty is chasing Deckard through the hotel. Yeah. Uh, oh, apparently the um, the the Roy scene where he has the dove. Yeah. That was his like in that in that speech at the end was his like he wrote that. Really. The actor. That's awesome. Yeah. Too bad he isn't popular, famous. He's probably dead. He's still alive. Now. Is he? Oh, he's, he's alive. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's like a throwback to that, but Deckard eventually is beaten or like defeated or like disarmed yes. by Ryan Gosling. Or... And he says he's like I don't want to kill you, but it's getting really hard not yeah. to. And then. He has somewhere just punches him in the face continuously, and K won't do anything. He won't defend himself. Yeah. And then an Elvis song comes on. Yeah. Oh, an Elvis song. I like the song. <laughs> that was a really like off-putting scene. Yeah. Like the holographics and that was. Because they're in like this like kind of like old school like fifties bar. Yeah. But it's setting. a future. It's yeah, a future. But it's a futuristic because it's like holographic Marilyn Monroe, holographic <laughs> Elvis Presley. Yeah. So that's it's interesting. I like. So that. they eventually have a, a few like they actually talk and yeah. answers are there's. Um, he never goes out and says I think you're my father. Or no. Anything. So this is one thing that I want to touch on now before we forget. Uh, Denise Villeneuve does a really good thing of getting rid of like the hero trope. Like, yeah. our main character turns out to be the hero, which you were worried about that. I yeah. uh, I was I was happy they didn't uh, reflecting on it. Uh, but at this point in the movie, you're like K is Deckard's. And yeah. Rachel's You're kid. basically convinced because yeah. there's no other evidence that would that we know that would say the contrary. Yeah. Uh, so you're like, holy shit. You're like, K is an actually born human. 
and like his memories rule happened to him or whatever. So they have a Deckard and K have a thing where Deckard's like, I would have like if you have if you love someone, sometimes you have to just not be there or whatever. Sometimes you have to let them go. And he's never seen his kid. He Rachel died. Rachel died during childbirth, and he's been yeah. living in Las Vegas, away from everything, hiding yes. from everyone. Because if they found him, he's a fugitive. He's a fu- He's the fugitive. Tommy Lee Jones is gonna hunt him. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> that'd be great. That would be a great. Movie. Blade Runner three. Blade Runner, a replicant Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, he's like a amazing. badass action. How yeah. old is Tommy Lee Jones? Like eighty. He's got to be really high up there. That's an old dude. Yeah. He's a good dude though. So, um, what does it say? So yeah, he's being hunted because everyone knows that. Rachel gave birth to a child. There's yes. a there's a child born of a, repli- a replicant. So, replicants are now like the evol like the ma- best evolution. They're physically stronger. This new version of replicants can live forever. They have very open. I think this is an open ended lifespan. Yeah. So they can live forever, and as soon as they are able to replicate, where they're more evolved than humans, they they're superior. So he's been hiding there, hunted. Uh, the hooker place the tracker on Ryan Gosling, but that's not the the tracker they used. Uh, Love finds yeah. Ryan Gosling, uh, crashes through the hotel or whatever, uh, gets Harrison Ford, beats the shit out of K, leaves the him there. Dog survives. Dog survives, thank God. There's a dog that's in an explosion. One of these scenes I really like that they just bring no attention to is Harrison Ford goes in the door, locks the door with the dog, yeah. and then they're both running, and Ryan Gosling just, just busts through, through the wall, and there's no, brought yeah. no attention to it. They're just like, the movie just keeps going. You're like, it's fucking cool. Um, but then they then Love brings Rod Deckard to Wallace, but that's later on. Yeah. So uh, the hooker is... Is she a replicant? Was she a replicant? A pleasure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what was I going to say? So... They eventually... And then, um, also, Love destroys the, um... Oh, yes, yeah, so... The wife. We should figure out about that. So, the wife... So, this was, like, an odd thing that I don't really... I was a little bit confused by it. I think if... So, the wife felt like she started to become, like, her own personality. Like, she's like, I want you to... Yeah, destroy... I, w- I want to come with you. Yeah, I want to come with you. Like, either the, the later, they'll either destroy me... Yeah. ...or I go with you. But is that, like... Or was that... K like pushing his own like illusion. It's hard to say because he changes because like when she's changing like, well oh, that's the thing because in the first scene with them like she's trying to find ways to please him. She's like yeah. want to dance, yeah, want me to make you something. Like yeah. she doesn't know, no. So like I feel like if if she just knew exactly what he wanted, mm-hmm. then like they wouldn't have had that whole like thing. Yeah, but this is so this movie actually has more interpretations than Mother. Oh, yeah. Which Mother is a Mother's movie. like the most complicated movie. Well, Yo, your head will explode. I, I, I know. I, 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 I'm, I'm liking Mother less and less the more time goes on. It's really like falling down. I, 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 it probably won't be my top ten list, it's but not I, still, be, I still appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it's still a good movie. But it's one of those things where it's like, well, is she becoming like self-aware and becoming like, is this what she actually wants to do? Or is this what she thinks Ryan Gosling's character wants? Yeah. Or is this what he wants? It's just, it's really like open to what you I, want. I would interpret it as, as, as she's... Because like K, mm-hmm. like it's our and like um, Rachel and the other Republicans, it's it's been and um, Roy, mm-hmm. it's been it's established that like over time they can become their own people. And I the only thing, like my my main evidence is the fact that like she tries to find ways to please him. Like she yeah. doesn't really know like what what she, what he wants sometimes. So it's like, I mean, it could make sense that he's like he's like subconsciously like I want to take her with me. But. So I th- I think it might be the case because her last line before she before so lo- so Ryan Gosling deletes her from the mainframe in his house so they can't track him yeah but he brings her on this little stick and if they lose the stick the stick breaks she's gone yeah. so right before uh, after love beats up beats shit okay uh, the hologram Joy pops up she's like don't hurt him or whatever and she looks at the little thing. And she's like, I hope you're pl- happy with her service, crushes it. And this is where I think your thing, there's actually more evidence where she's the last thing she says is, I love you, right before she dies forever. Yeah. So that, that I feel like is more evidence because it's not like a, like a wait, wait, wait. It's like a just, like, here's my last thing. Yeah. It's not for me. It's not, it's for, like, it's really, it's like a really, like. It's such a weird love story. So yeah. I don't know if I'm supposed to like it or not. I felt like, I was kind of like really like sad about that i was really like i was like oh shit 
But then, like, the look on Ryan Gosling's face is just, like, defeat and yeah. sadness. So then he gets, like, knocked out again. And then now we're getting to the main, like, the big, like, fuck Denise Villeneuve is a fantastic storyteller. And right at the beginning. Well, I mean, everyone on the production team yeah. is amazing. So he goes and this, the, the hooker who you met is part of, like, an organization that wants to overthrow the Wallace Corporation. Because you're, you're allowed to think that, like, he's part of, uh, like... Wallace's group. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. think that she's tailing like him for Wallace, but yeah, it's but not. That lady that talks to them at the week at right before. Some some lady goes talks to the. Prostitutes. Yep, some to go so to go like spy on him or to yes. go get information, and she comes back. Think and, I'm not interested in real girls. Yeah, she. <laughs> so she was a friend with Batista's character, and yes. she's like a replicant she, missing she one eye. The baby being born. Yes. So, what we find out is one. There is a mass organization of replicants, an underground organization, who are going to go against Wallace because they they have, like, awakened. They are now... They have their own emotions. They... So, I feel like there's so much here. So, I'm going to try to cover it. So, they have their own emotions. You're going to judge me. Uh, So, there's a mass organization. They they don't want to be slaves anymore. They know they're better. They don't think they should be slaves anymore. So, then, Ryan... So, then... They know this. They know that they're more than humans now, or the same as humans, or whatever, because they watch a child being born. And this is when the character with one eye, the replicant who's friends with Batista, is like, "Yes, I saw the baby girl being born." And Ryan Gosling, and then all of a sudden, you're like, "Holy shit!" Ryan Gosling isn't a child. And they then, all have the same. Mem- they all have the same memory. So of um of hiding the horse. So Ryan Gosling and it's meant to like to like confuse like because that's like kind of like. Part of, like a tragic part of this, like I, that's very understated, is that like they're all just pawns. Yep, they like, are. They're all just distractions from like something that's greater than them. So the big, like I guess the big twist in air quotes in the movie is that Ryan Gosling is not important to their story at all. No, he is. Sick. And that was great. I was very worried. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, please don't make him the chosen one or something no, like no. that. But no, he but is just he is just a dude. The reason why he was important is because he was the first replicant because he was a detective to ever actually seek out the memory. Yeah. But the memory was from the daughter. Uh the memory so this is jumping forward, but the daughter with the memories who creates all the memories Who's in the who's in the glass? Who's in the glass bubble. is Deckard's and Rachel's daughter. Yes. But you so one thing I really liked that is kind of subtle is Joy calls uh, Ryan Gosling's character K Joe, like an average Joe. Where yeah. he's like he's not actually special. Yeah. So there is so all of these replicants have ha- have the same memories as Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling, he is not important, but he can still die for a cause. And this is when uh, one of the best like conversations, uh, like confrontations, is Deckard and Wallace, where this now this is why I really like this movie too was because it now you can go back and dissect the original Blade Runner. So Wallace gives the illusion that what if Rachel was created just to recreate with you, just to fall yeah, in love Tyrell, with you. Tyrell had planned this whole thing. Yeah, what if you planned this whole thing? What if you were always meant to fall in love with Rachel from the first? Like, it was all set up, so everything was so perfect. And, and also questions, like, the the um, how genuine their relationship was. Like, what if... Rachel is this program this whole time to fall in love with Deckard. Yeah. It totally changes the way that you could view the the, the original Blade Runner movie. Yeah. Which is why which is the best thing you can do with a yeah. movie like this is now you not only made a movie that stands on your own, but one that can also improve the original. Yeah. Which doesn't now it's not the Deckard is a rep I like that they never actually answered that. They yeah. never say if Deckard's a replicant or not. I don't think he is. He, he there's no way he no. is. Uh so but yeah, it's Well, worth- I mean, probably the main reason that I would say no is because Harrison Ford was on set and Ridley Scott wasn't. And yeah. Harrison Ford's like, Deckard's not a replicant. Yeah. Only Ridley Scott thinks this. He's probably just walking around with a sign and goes, yeah. Deckard's not a replicant. Everyone look at this. Yeah. All the writers are As like, he crashes a plane. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> he crashes a plane with a banner that says, Deckard is yeah. not a replicant. And <laughs> oh, so God. there's that. So the confrontation is that they're trying to get Deckard to give information about where the kid is because... If they do, they can figure out the secret to why like, the old models could recreate, but they can't. Uh, and it ends with Wallace like bringing out like a, a thing of Rachel. With the CGI, it was beautiful. Like it looked exactly. I, I want to touch on like 
when he's when he brings up the fact that what if this whole thing was planned? What if mm-hmm. Tyrell planned this? Like Harrison Ford's acting is amazing. Oh, he can. And like it's it's directed. It's like the walls are all golden, uh-huh. but like there's like this like flat. There's like this shadow that keeps going by, uh-huh. and like every time you see it, like you can see like Harrison Ford losing it a little bit more. Yeah, and just props to. I mean, we the, the people who made this movie. Like props to like the art designers, cinematography mm-hmm. people, camera work. It was such a really well, and it added like this like you know Harrison Ford. His performance was great. It added like another like element to it. Yeah, and it was. I just wanted to touch on that because like it just such a small part had put, but like so much love went into it, and it really oh. went the extra mile. Yeah, you see, like Harrison Ford, like has genuine emotion. Like he's like he's so hurt, and like yeah. he's because he, now he questions everything. He's like, holy shit! Yeah, and that it just adds so much. And this is why I think Denis Villeneuve knows Blade Runner better than everyone else because that just adds so, so much. Ridley so, Scott. Yeah, he's definitely more than Ridley Scott. So that whole confrontation, and I like. So this is what I mentioned. Uh, we do. You never see what happens with Wallace. His character. No. That's a so that's his character. I think if they ever decide to make more of this universe, he's gonna be the branch between movies. Yeah, I think because that because I'm pretty sure the Deckard story is done. He, he he reunited with his daughter at the end of the movie. Well, this is jumping ahead, but K is dead. K dies by the way. He will get to, but he is wounded a bunch in a fight with love and dies. Uh, die. Well, because he, so like he when he, when he meets with like the rebels, mm-hmm. and he's like, doesn't he? He leaves at first. He's like, I don't want any part of this. I'm yeah. done. I did my thing. But then like he thinks, um, what was the quote that he like or, that he rethinks really that he thinks about something like while he's driving, he's like, he was like, make your life. Oh, something. It's like you like uh, dying for a cause is the most human thing you can yeah. do, or whatever. And he does. He goes to save Deckard. And in the fa- in the battle with love, uh, he ultimately overpowers in a really cool fight. Yeah, that right. that comes out basically, of basically no- like basically the, the, like the floating car is like sinking into the water. Well, yep. And Decker and then um, it's like they're fighting outside, mm-hmm. like on like this this like concrete part. Yeah, it's I don't know I don't really know what it's called. It's like but, a, but like and then like but like it, the weird thing is like when when love beats him, yeah. he, he goes I'm the bet I'm the better model or yeah. whatever. I oh yeah, that was neat. yeah, in yeah. that because she, they both shoot each she other. Had, like a chip on her, chip on her shoulder. Yep, and then what I loved is when Ryan Gosling, when Kay beats Love, he doesn't say anything. He just chokes her out and yeah. drowns her underwater, like looking down. It's very her. detached scene, and it's yeah. great because like, and like you actually see it, like you kind of have a sympathy for her because like, because like I feel like from what I read from her expression, she was more upset that she couldn't complete her mission. Yeah, and the fact that she was dying. Yeah, she's like, what the hell? She's yeah. like, no, no, no. Yeah, but. There is such a detached feeling because Ryan Gosling he has no emotion on his face and he's just with it doesn't seem like with any effort he's just drowning. Yes. This uh, love and love dies. Uh, he drowns her. He gets shot though. He gets stabbed twice and he's bleeding out. He saves Decker. Yeah. Uh, and he brings it to go meet her daughter and Deckard's like what are what are you like what what am I to you like why do you keep why why are you just like a replicant why do you keep doing this for me or whatever and I don't think he ever actually gives an answer he says just go see your daughter yeah. and uh but and there was like an ideal of like hope like Deckard's like it's like continuing with the first movie the dove was like the symbol of hope or whatever and now yeah. Deckard is Deckard and the daughter are now the symbols of hope that replicants can or mostly just the daughter the yeah well Deckard is yeah so then the movie ends. Yeah, with... There's no, there's no conversation between Deckard and her no, no. Are, like they, they meet and then it cuts. Yeah, and I've, Harrison Ford sells the moment yep. perfectly. And then Ryan Gosling goes out in the steps. It looks like he and there, there's snow. The snow yeah. is beautiful. The snow is beautiful, and this is why I, I really like this. Is you can tell that he accepts he's human now because yeah. he like he lines back and like feels the snow, and it feel they don't say anything. They don't actually ever make this clear, but it looks like he's just feeling the snow for the first yeah. time. He's like, this is what it feels like to be human. Yeah. Dies. Uh, Harrison Ford meets his daughter, doesn't say anything, puts his hand in the glass, sells the moment, cuts, Blade Runner, movie's over. There, we have obviously missed some stuff, but this movie just as a whole is just, there's, it's paced so beautifully. There, every scene that you think might drag a little bit is cut to perfection. Nothing ever drags. Nothing ever feels too slow. It's a slow burn, but it never feels slow. Uh, the it's action- a slow burn, but it never drags. Yes. Um, I just uh, talk on the last scene. 
I liked it because I think it, because I think it paralleled um, Roy's mm-hmm. last scene when he dies. Yeah. They're both because when Roy dies, he 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 lifts up Harrison Ford, mm-hmm. and it's it's always he always says, "I I am a I am a battle. Yeah. I'm I'm I was designed to kill." It's it's his sort of deni- denial of his own um, per is his own uh, what's what's the word denial of his own um, reason. Programming. Programming. Denying yeah. his pro. Yeah, exactly. Denying yeah. his program. He's going against what he's made to do. Going against what he's made to do. Um, developing a will of his own. Yeah. And just kind of like, and despite the fact that he's sort of bitter about how everything he's witnessed um, will all be for naught. Like you know, um, all, all my memories will be like will disappear like tears in the rain. Yeah. Um, it's he still has his own moral victory because he's able to find his own free will. The same thing with K. Opening credit, opening crawl is these things are these things do not dis, will never disobey. And yeah. you see that with love, like when she's dying, she's like, I cannot complete my mission. <laughs> like, I, that's, what, that's what I read in her face. Yeah. Like, I cannot commit my I It's cannot. anger. It's anger yeah. not the fact of dying, anger the fact that she can't finish and she's losing and yes. she's being stopped. And then so so then obviously with K breaking away from from life, mm-hmm. from from the LAPD, from Wallace's original design for him, yeah, and doing something that he wants to do, that something that he um, invests in himself and and is um, proud of, and him dying like that, knowing that he's made, human. made a will of his own. He no, not even that he's human, just that he's able to deny his programming and do and be his own thing. So I took that as because I felt like. Uh, that does, but I thought it goes a little bit further with the human part because it feels like the whole thing is the fact that their replicants were able to recreate, re- uh, procreate, sorry, and make a baby that. Well, uh, rhinoceros are able to procreate as well. What? Rhinoceros, rhinoceros are able to procreate. I think said Ryan Gosling is able to procreate. I'm like, yeah, well, he is. He's a penis, but. All right. So, do you have anything else on Blade Runner? I mean, um, do you have anything else you'd like to touch on? I think we're hitting about an hour mark now. Really? Yeah. Just for the spoiler section? Just, I think, for everything as a whole. Oh, for everything. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we, we totally didn't just film the non-spoiler review. Yeah! Uh, uh, <laughs> this was filmed a day later. What do you think of, um, of Rachel? Like, the, the, uh, like, the re... How they remade her. She looked fantastic. She's so much in... Compared uh, to Tarkin. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> compared to a year. To, oh, it looked like a freaking rubber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think Tark... <laughs> See, it's great. No, uh, Rachel was fantastic. It looked like an actress. It looked like a real person. There's a, there's a little little blink. Like I mean, I feel like she was a little like under textured. Like death to, like, in the humans. eyes, maybe or like not in the, like I like in like the face. Like I feel like it was a little too smooth. Okay, I can for, understand. But well, I mean, I mean the first... it, looked, it looked leagues better than yeah. Tarkin. Yeah. So CGI, I mean, all around is one of the best ever put to screen. Yes. So um, I guess um. I kind of wanted wanted to see more because I mean in the original like there there'd be times where they just would they just pan away and mm-hmm. like you just like see brief like kind of encounters with like the world. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's less of that in this. There's still it was, a few. It was but a little more. It was more contained. Uh-huh. Like, it was more contained with the characters. Um, I guess I would like to see more of what the world was like. Like like, like that one scene where he's just walking down the subway yep. and there's all this life going on. Some goes smoking skin job. Yeah. And then like and like later like there's like these guys just like just like. Um, power, power, flashing blood. Oh yeah, off the wall. very casually. Yeah, just like, like uh-huh. the things like that were great. Um, I would have liked to see just a little bit more of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and like my other other small gripe was that this whole revolution thing is is kind of like understated. It's kind of introduced in the last thirty minutes. This that might have been a thing set up for more though. But I I thought I the, know, but the whole revolution as a whole was meant to like symbolize like the replicants. Like it, again, I feel like this is all circled around it's all circled around the birth like all the revolution is the birth of a new age but they're kind of like we'll take it to we're, we're gonna take it to wallace. wallace and then he he they don't take it to wallace they don't they never. Not, it would have been rushed if they did it yeah but i mean they shouldn't have set up they shouldn't have had like they should have just been like we need you to yeah. get hairs so, like they shouldn't have, they shouldn't have had like this whole speech about I mean, I taking it to wallace like I, they shouldn't have gone that big already i mean they can te- like they can hint at it but i feel like it was a little misleading I can understand that. I can understand why you have an issue with that. I didn't think it took away anything. I think it was just a thing, maybe. Did you think Jared Leto was good? Yeah, he was really good. He was he, good. He was, uh, he sold, like, this, like, this kind of blind, like, detached genius perfect or whatever. And, uh, 
He also has a very uncomfortable scene where he guts a, a new replicant, and it's very just kind of... And he's, like, naked and just scared. Of yeah. Him. It's like, well, the first thing people... Fe- fear. Like people first, most people feel is fear, but the thing is, they don't know what they're losing. Yeah, and then he guts her, and then she dies, and you're like, fuck, that's cool. Uh, yeah, he's fantastic for the scenes you're in. Everyone, again, everyone's fantastic. There's no, there's no bad performance. There's nothing bad about this movie. There's nothing even good about this movie. It's all great. Everything. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. I think. Uh, I think. Yeah. I think we just met. Do you recommend Blade Runner? Do you um, recommend Blade I Runner twenty forty nine? Do you think it's a good movie? I think it's. I think it's a masterpiece. A masterpiece. Honestly. Oh. Want to quickly um, go through what we think are like the masterpieces of the twenty tens? Because I was thinking about this last night. Uh, you do yours first. I think. So like, I can't remember like a while ago, uh-huh. but I think that some of the most legitimate masterpieces have come out there's been one each year mm-hmm. for me yeah so in 2015 is Mad Max Fury Road yep 2016 even though it was even though it wouldn't be my favorite movie I can recognize that it's that it's a phenomenal made movie and that's The Handmaiden I think okay. The Handmaiden is an absolute masterpiece we should, we should talk about it someday if you ever watch it I want to do a review on it I'll do it I'll watch at it some because I think it's utterly flawless and then I think 2017 although it might not be my favorite movie at the end of the Blade Runner the is. year is Blade Runner 2014 uh, 2013 for me uh what was 2013? 2013 was Boyhood, right? Oh, God. Really? Well, no, that was 2014, yeah. right? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think in terms of perfect filmmaking, I, I can't think Dark Knight, maybe. Was that, was that 20, 2008? That was 20, oh, that was 2008, yeah. Uh, the Fighter, I think, is up there. Uh, let <laughs> let the right one in? No, Let Me In. No, that might have been 20, 2009, 2010. 2008, one of those. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. We might do a, we might do a, one of those top ten lists that everyone keeps doing yeah. one of these days. I heard those get those get pretty uh, those pretty get pretty big, big views. Yeah. All yeah. right. So I think we should end it here. We of course both highly 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 we recommend. Might, we might even be seeing it again. <laughs> most likely we'll be. We most likely will. Yeah. Uh. So again, thank you guys for listening. If you hadn't had a chance yet, check out our uh, any of our other reviews. Uh, watch uh, No Mercy twenty seventeen. Watch, watch the old <laughs> irrelevant No Mercy yet. Yeah. Go watch I our. Suck, don't watch it. Go watch our other reviews. Our it, uh, not it, not it. Uh, Bojack Horseman review. You can, watch it. you can watch your review. Yeah, you can watch it too. I mean, just watch, just watch our stuff. Just watch our stuff, please. And then like and comment, subscribe. Um, we'll be coming out next week with. What's next week? Is it Happy oh, Death Day next week? Happy Death Day and Foreigner. Wow, really? That's yeah, next week. Yeah, we so uh, I think we might see Foreigner before we see Happy Death Day. Uh, but we might even do a, uh, a double review where we talk about both in one. Maybe we'll have a Game of Thrones. We'll we, uh, this hopefully, we may hopefully Rick week. and Morty season three. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be that, fun to do. That'd be um, fun to do. But yeah, um, again, if you like what you see here, just subscribe and you'll get, you'll get more, more of it. More, you'll get more, more uh, Matt and Tyler. Yeah. A video a week, a video, to, it's basically yeah, one it's or video, two videos a week. Videos a week. That's, yeah. that's pretty good considering yeah. the length. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'd say we have more minutes per week than, uh. Chris Duckman or Jeremy Johns. He's calling out people already. We, yeah. we have three subscribers. You hear that, Chris Duckman? I don't care what you grew up with. I'm, I'm, I'm cutting it. I'm not cutting it. No, you're not. All right. So thank you guys for watching. This is Tyler. Watching. This is Matt. And goodbye.